Hi, I'm Chris Jones with Speed of Sound Audio Experts, and uh, we're just going to do a little informational video on remote starters, the basics of the remote starter, how remote starters get installed, and some of the features of remote starters. Let me show you first. This is, this is what some of the installations look like that we take out of other people's vehicles. So this is what some of our competitors do for work. What we do here that's unique is we make these special what we call T-harnesses. And the way these work is instead of cutting and splicing wires inside the car, we actually unplug connectors that are already in the car. So this is a Honda. So in, the, in a Honda vehicle, there's already this connector. We unplug these connectors. We are then able to tee these connectors in between the existing connectors in the car without cutting or splicing any of the vehicle's wiring. Well, the advantage is, of course, not cutting or splicing the wiring. Um, it, a lot of dealerships and mechanics, if they see a remote starter was installed, and they see that the wires were cut, the first thing they do is say, oh, you better check with the guy that put the remote starter in. Where with this, no wires are cut. Even if the vehicle had to be worked on, we can easily unplug this remote starter, take it out of the vehicle, put everything back to factory, and now the customer could bring the vehicle in to have it serviced. It's just a much cleaner way of doing the installation. Not to mention the reliability of this product. If anything ever had to be replaced or repaired, we can take this out, put in a new product, send you on your way. The main reason most people want a remote starter is for the winter. Cars are outside, in New Hampshire anyway, windshields were covered in ice. Normally you'd go out, start the car, walk out, you know, bundle up, walk outside, start the car. Maybe if you're in a rush, scrape the windows with, you know, scrape, scrape with the ice scraper. With a remote starter, you roll out of bed, you push a button, or what I do is open the app on my phone, start my car, go take my shower, get my breakfast, go outside, car's nice and warm, windows are all defrosted. Even if you have snow, the windows are now warm enough that the snow will just slide right off of the windows. A pretty fair amount of the remote starter installs that we do are people who brought vehicles into us that already had a remote starter. They got it somewhere else, they lost a remote, it just stopped working. So we'll get it in the shop, you know, we'll try to program a remote, um, but usually what we find is a, a big rat's nest of wires some wires that are not taped, um, bare wires under the dashboard. You know, we've pulled dashboards off and heard sparks. Um, and so that's something that we clean up. We can take all that out, repair the damage that was done, and put in the starter the way that we put the starter in and know that the customer is gonna leave here with a starter that's gonna last as long as their vehicle's gonna last. There are many options uh, with remote starters. Even the, the most basic option is to use your factory key and you can run it right off the key. You press the lock button on the key three times and the car starts. It's great, everybody likes it on one key. The downfall is it's your factory key. The factory key has a range of about 100 feet. So if you ever wanted to start it inside a Walmart, inside a movie theater, inside a restaurant, sometimes even at home or in an apartment, you, you're not gonna get the range out of something like this that you would out of something even basic like this that gives you 1,500 feet of range. So 1,500 feet is great. Um, this is a, what we call a one-way remote. So it transmits the remote signal to the car, the car starts. You need to be able to see the lights on the car to know the car started. So again, 1,500 feet is great, but you still need to be able to see the car. The next step up from that is what we call a two-way remote. What a two-way remote does is when you hold the button down, you hear a beep, that initial beep is telling you that the car is going to start. So that's saying you're within range of the car, the car will start, and then once the car starts, we should get that. That just told me the car started. So now I know my car started, I can't see it. I'm inside Walmart, at the movie theater, in a restaurant, at work. We have a lot of customers that work at Liberty Mutual, work in hospitals. They need something like that to start their car after work because some of the other stuff isn't going to work you can use your phone to start your car. So this has remote start, remote stop, lock, unlock. You can locate the vehicle. My vehicle happens to be at Toy Tech in Barrington right now getting worked on. This uses cell towers. So basically the way this works is there's a device installed inside the car. That device is connected to the remote starter. That device is getting signals from cell towers. You could be here and that car could be parked in California or vice versa. Uh, we have a customer, a good customer, who's an airline pilot who actually flies from Boston to California to Hawaii often and he's gone for 10 days. He leaves his car at Logan Airport all winter long, 
so the car is there for you know a couple of weeks max. He can monitor the battery voltage from this. He can then start the car to make sure that the, he's not going to come back from a long trip and have a dead battery. So when he gets to his car at Pilot Parking, the car is all started and warmed up. Took my son to a Celtics game. We went from Dover, New Hampshire, downtown Dover train station. We rode the train into Boston. On the way back, we got to the Durham station to drop people off. I started my car from Durham, got to Dover, the car was all warmed up. 